chilly. I don't leave the heat on in here overnight. For obvious reasons. Nobody's in here. <clears throat> so, it's a little chilly when I first get in here. This is a good jacket. Now, what day is it today? I think it's Friday today. Um, I think I will have left by the time you are hearing this. Watching this. I got lots I could probably talk about. I got a lot to share. A lot of emails to share, that's for sure. And a quick note. Quick note. A quick thought to share for the people that care. <clears throat> you know, with all the, the, uh, the massive dump on us daily via our devices, I guess, it's like, it's almost like an overload, isn't it? You know, we keep getting one... The world will get all the all the influencers, if you as we don't call them, true speakers that have substantial following seem to take note of and see the same absolute shit show of an item hit the plate, which affects all of us. And we'll talk about it. It's a big flurry for a couple days. And then boom, they get on the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. It's just a blizzard of us getting slammed in the face with all these nasty facts. And it's almost like that move alone may possibly be working against us. Now, let me put this in a different way that you might pick up what I'm putting down. Now, as a guide, as a professional outdoor hunting and angling guide, I can assure you that, as an example, once you start chasing the spots, lose your patience, chase the spots. You think maybe over here, maybe over there, follow me, you lose. As a guide, you lose every time. Sometimes you get lucky. You know, if you got a little bit of an inkling or a gut, a gut instinct, you, you might have to go over there. But I mean, when you actually lose your patience and you start chasing the spots. I'm going to try over here. I'm going to try over here. I'm going to try there. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go there. You lose. You lose every time. It's, it's spot overload. There's nothing you can do. There's no plan. You're not doing it right. You're not, you're not investigating and looking into and being thorough with that spot right there before moving on to the next and you lose it's a lesson i've learned in life through the years of running around out there doing these things making sure that these also these expensive business transactions go through smoothly between the clients and the guy nail fitter anyway what i'm saying is i wonder if two to make a serious difference, to make life better for all of you and I around the world, it would be if all of the true good souls with substantial reach got together and threw down all of the top issues that are having a negative impact on the people and pick, put them in, in uh, layer them up and list them in, in a list of importance and significance and which one dealt with first would do the most help. And all the influencers flew influencers and all the people dive on that one topic and do not lose focus on that topic until it's dealt with. And then move down the list. See what I'm getting at? And you see how my guiding a guide screw up of chasing the spots screws you up, and makes you lose. And I think that's what's going down today with all the information being shared with all of us. That's what I think. We have a lot of real good people in the world. A freaking, basically, nearly everyone here is a superhuman in this 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 crowd here. And I wonder if if we could somehow somehow organize the people, right? Organize the people, the major influencers who are good people, who are motivated to do nothing but good for all of us, all of you, all of us. Rain it in, quit chasing all the spots, which is all the, the bombshells. List our top dozen serious problems in society today, or what the bad guys are doing. Put them in a list of importance and start number one. And everybody across the board put all their energy, their good energy into that, their warrior energy into that number one issue. Pummel it to death until it is dealt with and check it off the list and go to the next one. That's what I'm thinking needs to be possibly done. What do you think? Think about it. Throw it down in the comment section below. Talk talk about it with your your friends and let me know what you think.
because I think that needs to be done. Everybody getting bombed nonstop with everything isn't doing shit. He isn't doing shit. We need to deal. We need to deal with it. Now, let's get to hearing from the people. This is titled, I just caught this this morning. I went into my inbox this morning and grabbed a whole bunch of emails. This is titled, My Puzzle Piece, Early August 2001. Hi, Steve. My name is Devin Gray. And you can use my name. No shits given. I've been following your channel for years now and been slowly learning about this subject. I'm a Victoria boy. Born and raised. I'm guessing... Well, who knows? It's going to be Australia or Vancouver Brown. God bless you and your family. I'm a city boy, so please bear with me. My girlfriend and I had the chance to go camping together with another couple for the long weekend. Fairy Lake was the spot. Okay, you're from Victoria, Vancouver Island. And I actually, that's where I grew up, in Victoria. Go figure. I remember getting, side note, sorry, but I remember getting pulled over by game checks on the way home after a season of guiding. And they're checking all my shit out. And they look at me and go, a hunting guide from Victoria? <laughs> right. I was definitely born in the wrong place. But anyway, moving along. Fairy Lake. I'm going to add in another tidbit. Fairy Lake. Well, let's just wait. Oh, sorry. I'll bite my lip till I get to the end of this. My apologies for the interruption. Fairy Lake was the spot. To get to our campground, you had to drive up a dry creek bed. It was absolutely beautiful. The first day there, we went for a hike and saw two baby black bears run up a tree not 10 feet away from us. We all booked it because we had no eyes on the mama bear. Later that night, around the campfire, beers were flowing and the laughter was loud. The girls passed out around 1.30. Shortly afterwards, me and I'll call him Jay, started to hear high-pitched clacking. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This happened... Six or seven times. That's when we heard sploosh, kerplunk. Something very large had just hit the water. Jay ran to the truck and got a spot torch and shined it on the lake. We saw giant ripples coming from just about the middle of the lake. The middle. Holy shit. So the middle of the lake, if I remember correctly, we're talking like a couple hundred yards. No more than 20 feet away from us. Oh, all right. Sorry, guys, I'm screwing up. I should just keep reading, right? Let me let me redo that. We saw giant ripples coming from just about the middle of the lake. No more than 20 feet away from us. Steve, we're the only ones at that spot. We had the look of pure shock and surprise on our faces and decided to stop immediately and go to our tents for the rest of the night. The next morning after breakfast and some more hair of the dog that bit us breakfast of champions lol jay and i got to talking about the night before and decided not to tell the girls because it was only our first day and four more to go the rest of the days were pretty much standard camping stuff until the last night there for some reason i was woken up just after 4 a.m to the sound of something or someone walking closer to the to the of to the of the tent. A little typo there, closer to the tent. And holy shit, I thought it was that mama bear. I woke my girl up and quickly put my hand over her mouth and quietly said, Don't say anything. We could hear heavy breathing right behind us. It almost sounded like it had asthma. I slowly unzipped the tent and said and said, wait for me to say, run for the lake when I tell you to. After listening to this for what seemed like an eternity, we both heard something walking away, and then a large snap in the distance. We didn't leave the tent until we heard the other couple awake and outside. Immediately after telling Jay what happened, it was the quickest pack up and go. Steve, a reminder back then, I knew nothing of this subject matter, but now I'm sure what we encountered. No camping for me these days, unless it's in a backyard or someplace like Goldstream. I'm a city boy and I'll say that. And I'll, sorry, I'm a city boy and I'll stay that way. 
Thanks for letting me tell my story. Not the most crazy you've heard, but it's mine. And there you go. Um. Okay, Devin, this is what I'm going to tell you, man. So, uh, Fairy Lake. It's in the San Juan Valley, as you know, but everybody else here might not know that. In the San Juan Valley, it's where the San Juan River runs in the bottom of it and dumps out into Port Renfrew on the west coast of Vancouver Island. You also have the Gordon River that dumps into Port Renfrew. Now, just up valley from where you guys were camping, if you face upriver, on the left side of the valley is where my grandfather ran into that dude face to face. Also, I know some fishing guides who found tracks just between where you were camping and Port Renfrew on the road. And some other fishing guides I know that got out of Port Renfrew, they saw one cross the road near where the bridge is, where the Gordon River dumps into the ocean, right there. And also, I used to drift fish that river in my drift boat for steelhead. And we would drive way up valley. We would leave a vehicle at the same campground that you were camping at. And then we would drive up the valley, dump the boat in, and drift that river all the way down. And I'll tell you what, you want to be creeped out in a way. Drifting the San Juan River is kind of creepy because as soon as you leave, the river leaves the, the road 90 degrees. It doesn't parallel the road. It just takes you off and away <clears throat> into the middle of basically nowhere with, a, with that great big Amazon-like canopy on both sides in a lot of places. And it's a very slow-moving river, so it's pretty quiet most of the time. And all you think, all I think, could think about was, you can't stop yourself, was these beings that are living around there, or they're there part-time, whatever they're doing, they're, they are there. And then Harris Creek also dumps into the San Juan River. So you keep driving upriver from where you guys went camping, hang a left. I believe it's paved now. I don't want to go there and see it paved. I just, I used to go there by myself. I drive all the way there from Victoria. I was a punk. So I steal that fish so much. Then I would drive all the way up there, up past that campground, keep going up Logan Road, hang a left, and then park, and then hike through the forest to get to Harris Creek to fish for steelhead in there. And that was after I'd seen one of these things. Creepier than shit, but my drive to get a steelhead over, over uh, rode my nervousness. Anyway, there you go. And I don't know if you do realize it or not, but there's a passage that goes from Ferry Lake straight into the San Juan River on your right. So if you're facing the lake from the campground, roads on the left, on the right, there's a little gap there. So we drift down the river and then hang a right and slide into that ferry lake and then uh, bash the truck and trailer down there and pull the boat out. Yeah. Would a sow with cubs go into your camp? No. <laughs> no, they want to keep those cubs away from humans, especially around there. Black bears don't like humans where they're hunted, and they are hunted a lot when the season's open around that area. So no, it wasn't the cub. And just the fact that you were knee-jerked enough to uh, write that in here, you already know what it was, man. You know what it was. And then you said, one more quick note, you said you're going to stick to places like Goldstream Campsite. Well, I hate to be the, the messenger, but they are sighted around there often between there and Hall's Boathouse, just up the Malahat, a lot. My grandfather, who saw, had the face-to-face, -face, he lived right behind Mile Miller's Pub at Coldstream. And uh, the police officer, female RCMP, saw four of them walk in front of a cruiser on Humpback Road, just up from Goldstream Campground. And that is also where I experienced the smell myself way back in when I was about 24, 25. I experienced the smell right there. And I recently drove around there last year, and the development is absolutely insane around there now. But they're there. They are there at Goldstream, big time. Anyway, thanks for sending that in, man. Appreciate your honesty and coming forward. This place is nothing. I love people like you. Yep, dropped right into the middle of... Sasquatch Central on Vancouver Island, San Juan Valley, and the Gordon River. My uncle, who, my mother's brother, who worked for CSIS, he was a police officer and also worked for CSIS for years, which is the Canadian version of what? The FBI, I guess. He told me that 
there is spelunking caves. Oregon, Oregon, parts of Oregon are are famous for their spelunking caves. And he said that the Gordon River area has something like five times the amount of cave systems than the Oregon world famous spelunking caves. Take note of that. All right, what do we got here? A screenshot for one of my videos. The world sucks right now. Clarified your flying thing caught on tape. All right. Hey, man, I hope this email reaches you. I had a hard time chasing it down. Couldn't click into any YouTube contact for some reason. I know you're busy and this video is older. I stumbled across you today and found myself agreeing along with you about the the sick of this shit knee deep in evil trying to stand my ground attitude I have about the I have about the current situation other than my wife it can feel pretty lonely with these opinions when you look around unfortunately not true but it's gaining speed I have my own stuff going on with all this larger than life cryptid x-files shenanigans I get physical things happening yeah but my turf seems to be more on the dimensional slash spiritual side. I gotta be honest, I'm effing feeling the weight of the world and what's and what's reality. How should you live? Real hard right now. You can learn Christ is real, take in his loving guidance, learn more about yourself, do right by yourself slash others, and still go for that what the F roller coaster ride. Your bird thing, my thoughts below here. Between boomers bitching about their bird watching credentials and millennials bitching about their game design backgrounds, I did my own frame by frame. And trust me, uh, sorry, and trust my gut analysis on this weird thing. It's definitely not a bug and looks like it's trying its effing best to be a bird, but nope. I've taken a screenshot of the, of the moment when your camera's shutter speed is actually able to accurately get a still frame of this object and attach it to this email. It's an effing rod. It's an effing rod that has flappy wings. An anomalous thing that makes no sense in our dimension, but here it is. This still frame I captured preserves the proportions of the object as it was in motion, but without a flap obscuring it. It's not a damn bird stretching thin to be a rectangle because of the camera distorting it. It was a total... I was a total ghost head as a teen and done my research with bugs looking like orbs. Not that either. My story to back up your bird thing below here. You hear things like this all the time with some research and I got my own little story to back things like this up. I was at a lake house with my friends with my friend slash his family, and we're chilling by the water at night. I look up and see a star acting like the ISS, but not orbiting. It was going on a path down towards the lake. Excuse me. I let my friend know. Then we both got eyes on it. Then the thing was airplane level, but still looking exactly like a star. Just a bluish white orb, smoothly dropping altitude, not flashing, constant. Then it was at bird flight height swooping at an even at an even pace still towards the water looking about softball sized. Then it was skimming across the effing water exactly like this but it was still the orb slash star circle shape about beach ball sized. After gliding very close to the water but never touching it the orb rose evenly leaving the opposite direction it came. It did the movement exactly in reverse. Bird height, airplane, star slash ISS, gone. At a guess, it was about 150 feet away from us, more towards the center of the lake when it swooped, just a tad further than your video. We had the same reaction you did. Huh? Weird. Pretty cool. But totally inert, harmless event. Can't do much with it. Moving on. But we got a little campfire story for the right people. Respect and interactions are a two-way street. I feel it out loud. Sorry. I feel it out and ask the locals if it's cool to hang in the woods when, approach, when approaching the trailhead. 
If I'm in nature and I get anomalies or spooky events, I trust my gut, appreciate the moments like above. When you have a cool little visit for the day, I take it in stride that it was meant for me to see slash hear slash receive. Kind of like a, hey, what's up? Casual meeting. Other beings I may know better and feel their presence more persistently. And if the sun sets on me and the dread, the dread, ugh, burden feeling sets in with a stick snap shuffle, I pray and I keep it up and moving. Haha. Uh -huh. Anyways, wish you all the best. Thanks for being a beacon of fighting the good fight. Help me feel less defeated. Hopefully we all get some help soon for those that are trying their best. Jordan. Okay, Jordan, here's the photo, man. Thanks. Appreciate you. Sounds like you've done some digging. There it is. That's a, that's really weird, isn't it? Got a few people try to capture that in a still and send it over, and every single person that caught it as a still and actually looked at it on their screen um, that are into that all said basically the same thing. That ain't no bird. And then you got other people lashing out. It's a freaking bird, you idiot. <laughs> right? It's funny the people that lash. It's funny how many people will lash with a disagreement, but they'll snap with emotion at the same time. It's a sign of weakness. Yep, I have weak moments. We all do. I can admit it, but can you? <laughs> but anyway, thanks for that. Do I think it was a bird that went behind me myself? Nope. No, it wasn't a bird as far as I'm concerned. Up for debate, but is it really worthy of time? For us to, de to debate what it was that went behind me that day? Probably not, right? We got bigger fish to fry. Anyway, there you go. I appreciate your time, man. Keep digging. You're not alone. There's always good. Somewhere there's always good. And we got to concentrate on it when we can. Now. What's this? Some revealing information from Mississippi. All right. Dear Steve, first of all, I want to thank you for what you do for all of us. You made it possible for me to be brave enough to share these bizarre occurrences. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's too easy. It's too easy. This will be the fourth email I've sent you. I've heard you read the first two, but I might have missed the third one. Let me get to this one, number four. These beings are all over my property, but I seem to be the only person they reveal themselves to. My husband never sees them, but he has heard them, but still refuses to acknowledge what it is. So I must be the tagged one. I've only actually visibly seen them twice, both times they were caught off guard, and I think both of them were young because they were much smaller, maybe only six or seven feet tall. I have an art studio in my home, and they like to hang around my art room window. If it's dark, my indoor infrared camera will pick up their image, regardless, if I have the curtain down, so they must be able to see through the curtain. One night, a very bizarre thing happened. The camera somehow reversed the image and appeared to be the inside of my art room. This is after I hung a blackout curtain up, and the camera, which is mounted on the windowsill, was not moved in any way. It was like they were telling me they could see me anyway, curtain or no curtain. This has made it difficult for me to work in my art room at night. The window is at least 12 feet off the ground, so these beings are extremely tall. They do not seem to mind the fact that I have a camera hung there. Another strange phenomenon is as soon as it gets daylight, they retreat to the wood line. You know this because there are cobalt blue objects that shine very high up in the tree line. I assume the camera is picking up their eye shine only. Sometimes you see white watery like portals. Sometimes you can see the outline of a figure in them. Steve, I'm certain they have the ability to disappear and come and go at their will. Okay, the last bizarre thing is for months, my doorbell camera at my back porch picks up a 10-foot tall figure that stands vigil all night near the cart port and at my back door. But I can only make him out by the camera. If I try to see him with my naked eye, he's not there. And my husband walks right past where he's standing. While I view the figure on the doorbell camera, and he never sees anything. 
I have a screen porch and I have heard all sorts of strange sounds. Odd, extremely loud birds, owls that sound like they weigh 800 pounds, and distant trees breaking. Dogs barking, but they don't quite sound like a dog's. Lots and lots of whistles. I know you said you really aren't impressed with pictures, so I'm not sending any. I guess if they're going to hurt me, they certainly could. But I don't push my luck with them. I don't go outside alone after dark or venture into the woods alone. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, there are numerous tree structures everywhere. Big axes, trees bent over, large limbs placed on either side of a larger tree. Trees laying in the Y of another, limbs precariously balanced high up. Freestanding pyramids with limbs woven between the V, just sitting on the open. I have a lot of yard art. Rocks, gnomes, fairies, they're constantly being relocated to different place. Of their choosing. And yard art from someone else's yard showing up and being hung in my trees. What does all this mean? I wish someone could answer all my questions. Thanks again, Steve. You're a god. Send to us your friend, Pamela Ross. Hey, Pam. I hope your neighbors don't see uh, the stuff hanging in your trees and think you stole it. That would kind of suck, wouldn't it? I didn't take it. What's it doing in your yard? <laughs> right? <clears throat> I don't know. Everything you mentioned... Everything you mentioned has been mentioned a million times. Not a million times. You know what I mean, though. It's it's uh, Everything mentioned is a huge... Are all patterns. Do I know what it means? Hmm. I don't know enough to blurt it out yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm slowly figuring it out. Do I know... Can I explain their actions? No. I got some theories, but we can all come up with theories, right? Until somebody actually looks us in the eye with a hairy face and tells us what's going on. Those are our stupid kids messing around or, or whatever. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. We found out a lot so far. And I do have a lot of information that I haven't organized and shared with you guys yet, okay? But anyway, we keep digging. We keep digging. There is a large handful of us putting together a lot. It takes time, right? It takes time. Anyway, we really, really, really need every single human being to keep speaking honestly and openly. That's what we need. No matter how many times you think you may have heard it from other people, doesn't matter, right? And then you're going to get your, uh, your odd... Loose cannon. Oh yeah, that's why you suppress the Christian's word, right? Holy shit. <clears throat> you know, there's a big difference. Let me tell you guys something. I remember one time I did a couple of apprenticeships when I was younger in the trades and part of the schooling portion of it I had to go to a school in Vancouver, British Columbia, and stay there and go to do the schooling part. And we had a test every once in a while. I'll never forget it. We did a test one day, and then we were supposed to stay and go over the test at the end of the day. We went, we got, we were handed our tests back. They already scored by the teacher. We got to see the questions we got wrong. And fill in the answers with the correct answer. There was like three guys that failed the test. They got their tests handed back to them at like three o'clock in the afternoon right? They got to fill in the right answers. The rest of the class got to leave the pass and the guys that failed had to stay and rewrite the same test. Two out of the three failed again. Holy shit. The one I'm saying is there's so many people out there that just missed the most obvious shit. And some of you are going to be a little pissed off that I'm speaking right now and not reading the email, but too bad. The amount of people that I've explained to, and I'm going to do this one more time, this is the last time. When it comes to the pages in Genesis, they've been emailed probably daily, nearly daily. At least every three days, I get somebody just specifically emailing me in to tell me that they feel that Genesis is the answer. Okay, I got it. If I keep reading the same pages out of the same book every single day, we are all going to get very frustrated and angry. So... It's been done. We've read it a, a gazillion billion times. 
the pages word for word. We've done it. So I'm just saying, please, we've done it. We've done it. We got it. Appreciate it and appreciate it. But we can't keep doing that. We do need to hear the people speak. There's a difference. We can hear people's experiences. And we can also hear people forwarding the same page from the same book daily. Which we can't keep doing that. That's what's going down. And I've had you not, and I, some of you people are going, we know, Steve, we got, we got the message, man. You guys don't understand how many emails I'm getting of loose cannons that don't hear words clearly. And they're accusing me of suppressing voices, not reading the stories, and being anti-Christian. Holy shit. They're probably the same people that failed the test after being given the frickin' correct answers, right? I'm over it. Sometimes I just lose my patience sometimes with dumb people. And that's not being insulting. It's just a fact. I have so little patience for dumb people. They frustrate the shit out of me. Taking up my oxygen and space and time. I'm probably sounding like one right now. <laughs> there you go. All right. This next one is titled North Carolina Sabe. Hey, Steve. Hope all's well. I'm a huge supporter of your channel and have the utmost respect for you and what you're doing for this community. Appreciate you and the kind words, and especially you coming forward. I had one escort me out of the woods back in 2001 in Comfort, North Carolina. About 30 miles from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I camped out. Uh, sorry, I climbed out of my tree stand about 10 minutes before final light to give myself time to get back to the truck. About a quarter mile. The area I was in is very overgrown and thick and thick block of about 3,000 acres of cultivated pines and old growth forest. I made it about 50 feet from my stand and thought I heard footsteps behind me. I stopped and listened. Nothing but silence. No birds, no squirrels, no bugs. Thinking I must have imagined it, I took off walking again. Almost immediately, more steps behind me. At this point, all the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stood up. I realized I wasn't alone and had no clue what was following me. Think it may have been a bear or a bobcat, as we have both here in eastern North Carolina. I turned around and started walking backwards, watching my tail. Nothing, no sounds, no movement. I made it 40 to 50 feet, thinking whatever it was had trailed off. I turned around and started walking faster, just trying to close the distance to my truck. And at this point, it was past dusk, and most all seeing light had faded. I realized I was starting to hear thudding footsteps. Not really crunching through the leaves, but heavy, hard footsteps. Like a big, heavy person jogging through the woods, but heavier and louder than any human. I suddenly got a sinking feeling. A fear that climbed down into my guts and made me want to puke. I turned around, chambered around into my Winchester 270, and sent around into the dark. The boom echoed through the silent woods for what seemed like forever. I waited and listened. Pointless as I was now defeated by the shot. Oh, sorry, I was now de deafened by the shot. I turned to sprint to the last eighth of a mile to my truck. Once back on the road again, I dumped the remaining four rounds of 270 I had into the tree line. <laughs> I remember I tried to yell F you at whatever it was, but my voice only cracked and got caught in my throat. And then that deep fear crept back into my guts, like something was projecting this feeling upon me. I felt so extremely intimidated and terrified and pissed off that I didn't know what it was that just ran my ass out of the woods. I jumped in the truck and hauled us back to the house. Now, Knowing what I do, thanks to your channel and the experiences of what others have shared, I'm not so shook in the woods anymore, but still hyper-vigilant. Vi yeah, no doubt. Me too. I still go out into the woods and explore, but never unarmed, and never without pausing every 15 to 20 yards to look and listen. I'm naturally curious about these beings, but not to the point I feel the need to go seek them out. Back then... I had no interest, no knowledge, and no desire to contact these beings, and I still don't. 
but I do curse our government. The ass hats could at least inform us of what lives in the woods. That was a very unpleasant experience, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. It destroyed my will to hunt and go out and enjoy nature for a long time. I've not experienced anything like that since, and I hope I never do again. Be safe out there, and thank you for all you do. Use my name, I don't give a shit, Jake. Okay, Jake, gotcha, man, appreciate you. Don't let it win, right? Don't let fear win. Fight through it. Get back out there. <laughs> Go hunting. Right? And then, uh, but don't, one thing I'd like to caution people or encourage people to don't give a group called the government the power. Take that power back away from them. Don't give them the power for us, you, to think we need anything from them. We don't. We never did. That wasn't supposed to be how, that wasn't the way it's supposed to be, where you're not supposed to need anything from them. They were supposed to work for us, right? So I'll bite my lip on that topic. You know how I feel, but I'm just saying, I hope that everyone is realizing the fact that we don't, we're not supposed to look for one group or one individual for answers. We're not supposed to. We've been, we've been conditioned to do that since we were that big. Since they took us from our homes and put us in that room to get conditioned by that stranger at the head of the room. Keep your mouth shut, repeat what they say, and if you don't do it accurately, you're going to fail in life. Wrong! <laughs> but anyway, we need each other to share the truth with each other. That's what we need. That's the only way. That's the best way. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, F the government right up the A. Kick him to the curb. You can hang them from trees and then uh, concentrate on the people like we're doing here. It's working. It's a very, very, very powerful thing to do is looking for answers from the people. Right? Right? Anyway, I appreciate you, man. I hope you're safe out there. And that message wasn't just for you. It was for everybody. Who's next? Who's next? All right, here's the next one is titled Huge Prints in the Snow. What are they? Good morning, Steve. I've been listening to you for several years now on YouTube. My daughter sent me the attached video from a friend of hers who was hunting in Truckee, California yesterday. He is approximately six foot five and is a husky set guy. His shoe size is 13 and a half. And he's hunted all his life. He's Native American. The prints on this video were not there when he entered the forest. They were there when he was leaving for the day. They are fresh and he cannot identify them. And he said, the unusual thing about them is that the snow melted in the print while, while him walking. Oh, sorry, while him walking, his prints only pressed down the snow and did not cause it to melt. There are no claw marks, too. Sorry, there are claw marks, too. Do you know what these are? Hmm. Well, let's have a look. I don't know what the fuck this is, but this is not a bear. There's nails on it, whatever, and a big ass toe. Yeah. <laughs> 
That is not cool. I threw it again. Those are weird. For sure. That was just on my cell phone. So let me I'm gonna load it up onto the onto the uh computer for a better look. But right now, uh do I know what those are? Nope. It's springtime. Bears are definitely out of the hole now. More of the large males are out right now. But here's the fact about bears. And I've guided many bears. Black bears, grizzly bears. I've been on brown bear hunts of Kodiak. Alaska. Now, um, in the springtime, how should I say this? Anytime you see a bear following, bears, when you see bears, numerous bears, more than one bear together, walking, they are always in line. Always. In the springtime, if you see a small bear walking in the front and a large bear walking behind it, they're, it's mating season springtime. That'll be a male bear following a female. Also, when a female walks, the cubs follow in line behind her. Bears don't walk side by side down, down the road like two humans would. Now, wolves. When wolves walk, and I got a lot of experience with wolves, when wolves walk with each other as a pack, when they're traveling, normally they walk in each other's footprints and trail out. Sometimes, like on ice, you'll see a pair running down here, a pair coming down there on the ice, see the tracks, but they eventually come into one. Always come into one. They'll spread out and go hunting. And they also, very rarely will they just go in, a, especially on a logging road, very rarely will a, a wolf just go straight down the road, maintaining like, a, like it's a path, like we would. They are always weaving and sniffing. Always. Always weaving and sniffing all the way up the road, stopping to pee, stopping to crap. That's what they do. They don't go side by side, two of them, and go down the trail. So there's two serious indicators that right away make me go, huh? What the F is that? Then you got the shape of those prints. I wasn't there to see them up close. But here's the confusing part for me in seeing those prints in the snow. In the toes and the front of the print, you can still see distorted snow chunks from where the, the toes kicked up, whatever they did. The melt in the track isn't consistent with the, the flakes, the little crumbles that you see up near the toes. If those prints had melted out when the sunlight was on them for the day, they would have melted those little crusty pieces in the prints as, as, as well. It's a very confusing print for me. Looks like it's possibly melted out from the day of sun being on it. But why is it the little crusties melted out too in the front of the track? So the front of the track has that real fresh look to it. And the rest of the track has the melted out old track look to it. That's not normal <laughs> for me to see that. Mm. Also, ungulates. I know it wasn't an ungulate, but I'm just going to tell you while we're on the topic. All the male deer of all deer species, and a deer species is caribou, moose, elk, deer. All the males drag their toes when they walk. All their life, they drag their toes. So there's going to be a long, a long strip between each imprint. Strip coming out of it, strip going into it. They drag their toes. There's no dragging going on to those prints either. And it's a short, those prints look to be a short stride. Which is just, those, those are odd prints. I don't know what the F those are. I don't even have a half a guess what those prints belong to. I haven't a freaking clue. And I'm a licensed, experienced trapper and big game hunting guide. So, there you go. I would be interested if that man followed those tracks all the way up. <clears throat> and I would have loved to have loved to have been there. I would have loved to have tracked that, that, those two sets down. Because when you follow the tracks, if you're not sure what they are, they will also eventually tell you what they are by where they stop and what they do when they stop and what they pay attention to. If you put any pile of canine droppings on a trail or on a road, the wolves, coyotes, and everything, they have to stop and do their thing on top of it. You come to the, what a branch sticks out from the side of logging road on a wolf or canine trail. They have to stop and urinate on it. All canine tracks go down the road urge, and veer off to that branch or that stump, that, that overhanging anything, that whatever. They just have to do it. They got to do it. 
So that's an easy indicator when you track something like that. Oh, it's canine. Cats, big cats, they'll cruise down the road. But they're on the prowl and on the hunt too. And they don't really, don't really like being out in the open. So two cats aren't going to go side by side like two humans all the way down the main wide open trail without stopping and sniffing or weaving or whatever. Cats usually cross the road. They'll go down the road for a ways. And the kittens will walk in behind. And there's no questioning what a cat track is in the snow either. And anyways, I would have loved to have been there to track those tracks down myself. Because they will eventually tell you what they are if you're confused. And if you're still confused at the end of that track, well, there you go. It's something that's not we're not familiar with. But I'd be interested to see where those tracks went. Where they stopped and paused. Which direction they faced when they paused. Did they feed? Did they drop some droppings? Where'd they go? Where'd that, where'd that trackway end up? So it'd be really cool if you could possibly uh, get in contact with that guy. You may even get him to email me at sharemystoryhowthunt.com and, and answer some of the questions. They just don't. What did the, where'd the tracks go? How far did they go? Did they go uphill, downhill? Did they go into thick bush? Did they turn off the road only in open area? You know what I mean? A wolf, a cat, a bear. They'll just hang left and go right through a tunnel. A tunnel through thick brush. Right? So did those tracks hang left into brush? Did those tracks turn off the road only when it got open enough for something upright and tall to, to turn? You know what I mean? They stop and urinate, defecate, feed, face each other. Walk in each other's prints or stay parallel beside each other. Vanish, come to a dead end and just vanish in the snow. Very interesting, very curious, and yeah, kind of alarming. <laughs> if I seen that by myself in the woods, I'd be like, whoa. What the F is that? Do I, but, and then I'd be relying on, relying on my gut to decide if I should pursue those tracks any further, turn around and go home. My, my gut would be the decider there for sure, but it's a pretty bizarre set, right? For all you experienced hunters and trappers out there. Hmm? <laughs> What, what what were those? Throw down the comment section below, maybe. Throw down what you think that was. And if you think you can dictate exactly what they are as a known species, back it up. Send me the pictures with the animal making the tracks. All right? Anyway, here we go. Share my story, howtohunt.com. Get it out, get it shared, speak openly, all right? And think about what I said in the beginning about everybody coming together, focusing, making a list of the 12 nastiest problems we have in society today. Taking the first one of greater importance and, and concentrating on it. All the people in the whole world concentrating on that issue and pummel the shit out of it until we fix it. It's just a thought. Talk to you later. I don't know what the fuck this is, but this is not a bear. There's nails on it, whatever, and a big ass toe. And I got my gun on me. This is a fucking bear, dude. Jeez. Nope. This is something walking with two feet. And nails. And there's two of them. Oh, that is not good. I don't know what that is. That's not a bird. That's not a bird. Oh, damn. Well, we'll see what it is in a minute because I'm going right to it. Look at that. It's a fucking bug. Wow. <laughs> that is not cool. That's where it goes.